very big warm welcome to everyone and to the 100th special edition of Sunday Night Nightcap. You've been asking where do we all live? Well, we live in Northumberland. Where on earth is that then you might ask? Well, we're situated right up in the very top right hand corner of England and in the north of Northumberland we border with Scotland. Tonight we're going to try and show you some of the magnificent sights, some stunning scenery and we'll try and include aerial views of the places shown with a red dot on the map. So, seats in the upright position, tables folded away and seat belts securely fastened and off we go. We join tonight's tour in a place very near to where I live. This is Seaton Sluice Beach, which joins onto Blythe Beach. We can see Blythe Harbour and next year it'll host the fourth leg of the 2016 Tall Ships Race. Northumberland, yeah, right in my doorstep. The cream outlines are pathways. Climbing up to a nose, she affords some spectacular views of our area. Right next to Blythe is Linmouth Power Station. And next to the power station, we come onto New Biggin Bay with its two statues out on the breakwater and two smaller statues that uh, the children seem to absolutely love on the promenade. Here's the two small statues. And actually, there's two real people on this one. The spectacular coastline continues north, and we come up to Cresswell, and then we continue on to the magnificent bay of Jurage Bay. Now, I'm going to be a little bit sneaky. I'm going to slip an extra picture in, and this picture doesn't belong anywhere in Northumberland. Let's see if you can spot it and then point it out in the comments uh, section if you can leave a message. We're fast approaching up to Amble. Amble stands on the mouth of the River Coquit. The Coquit's about 40 miles long and it starts its life on heather-covered moorland up in the west. Just off Amble is Coquit Island. Just inland from Amble, we're still on the Coquit, stands Warkworth. The town and its castle, both enveloped by the river, standing on a horseshoe piece of land. We leave Walkworth, head back down the river Coquit and out into the North Sea, make a sharp turn left and we headed north on up to Allenmouth. It's aptly named, isn't it? It stands on the mouth of the river Allen. Inland from Allenmouth is the historic market town of Annick. Annick boasts a beautiful castle that is featured in many films most recently, it was renamed Brancester Castle, and it was used in the filming of the Downtown Abbey 2014 Christmas Special. It's a real hole, and home to the Percys, the Duke and the Duchess of Northumberland. But didn't come just now, because it's shut. It's shut till March 2016. Harry Potter films, the first two, were filmed and Anna Castle was used in the making of those films. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, also used the castle to film. The Duchess, she's developed the gardens and its water feature and its associated attractions. The castle itself is featured in over 30 TV programs and films, and it's surrounded by the Huln Park. We can't see it in this picture, but the River Coquit flows through this little village, the village of Lesbury in the railway viaduct. We head back down the River Coquit, back out on Allenmouth, and we'll turn left and head back up north. The place I've really got to mention is RAF Bulma. It's home to the 202 Squadron of the RAF, the Air and Sea Rescue Helicopter Cruise. We leave RAF Bulma those magnificent men and their flying machines. We'll head up the coast over a couple of villages and we'll head off for Howacall, just inland from the coast. The small harbour that's coming up is uh, Crasta. It's a very, very small fishing village and it's mega famous for Crasta Kippers. The ruins of the castle right on the headland are the ruins of Dunstanbury Castle. The castle is only accessible on foot. 
I hope all these lads and lasses are keeping a good sharp eye out, mean, for that picture that doesn't belong here in Northumberland. Continuing up the coast, around some more beautiful aerial views of bays, we'll head on up to the point of Beadnell, and then we'll continue on to the Sea Houses Harbour. Welcome to Sea Houses. The still active fishing boats use Sea Houses Harbour, and the harbour is also home to many of the tourist boats that go across to the Farn Islands. These are a sanctuary for wildlife, particularly puffins, seals, and several other species of birds. We we'll continue up the beach, Bambara Beach, heading up to yet another castle, Bambara Castle. Of course, like so many of these historical treasures, Bambara is featured in many, many films and documentaries. It's about 42 miles north of Newcastle upon Tyne, and I think it's about 70 miles south of Edinburgh. It has its own little car park, and you can walk across the road and up into the castle itself and explore your heart's content. In Bamber as well, there's a smashing little museum, sometimes worth a visit, the Grace Darling Museum. Just round the corner from Bamber is Budel Bay, and then in the vehicle access across to Holy Island with Lindisfarne Priory, Lindisfarne Castle, and the various sandbanks you can see today have Boscan seals on them. We leave Holy Island and we'll head up to the River Tweed, with Berwick upon Tweed, another two and a half miles north, and we're into Scotland. The big viaduct carries the East Coast main railway line that runs all the way up to Edinburgh and then on up to Inverness. We leave Berwick, head back down south, Mint be down over Chillingham Castle, and then we'll be down over the town of Wooler, and onto the Corkett Valley that takes the River Corkett down through Rothbury. In Rothbury stands the magnificent house, Cragside House, and it has a lake that was the world's first hydro-powered electric house. Simon Side Hills are covered in purple heather, and Cheviot stands at 2,674 feet above sea level. Down into Rothbury, and you can see the river Coquit winding its way down through the valley. Rothbury just across on your left. Simon Side Hills, Cragside House, and the lakes that supplied water for the hydro power scheme. We we'll leave a very cold Rothbury and its snow-capped hills. We'll fly over one or two reservoirs and then we'll cut across over to a small village just off the A1, Swarland. Just cutting over Swarland now and then we'll head off down to Longhorsley and then we'll cut over to Felton. Cut back west over the hills and we'll have a quick look at the Roman wall, the Roman fort, and Cholifed. Here is Cholifed, and we call this, it sits on what we call the military road.
we'll leave Cholifad and we'll head off and pick up the Tyne Valley. We'll head off down to Hayden Bridge and then we'll pick up over the top of Hexham and then we'll head off further downstream to Corbridge and then we'll be approaching down into Newcastle upon Tyne. Well, here we go. Bridges. First one we can see is the Rediff Bridge, then the King Edward Railway Bridge, then the Metro Transit Bridge, then the High Level Bridge, a one hiding in between the Swing Bridge, then the big circular Tyne Bridge, and then the Gateshead Millennium Bridge. <coughs> Quick shot of Newcastle United Football Stadium. Another view of the bridges. One of them's missing to the left, the Millennium Bridge. It's not shown in the photograph. Wall's End was quite famous for its shipbuilding. This is just one example of their expertise. You wouldn't like this sitting in the end of your street for too long. We're looking at the curved terrace of Percy Gardens, overlooking the King Edward Bay. We're now in Tynemouth. You can see the Priory Castle. The cross on the banks of the Tyne stands Lord Collingwood's monument, keeping an eye on the boats coming into the River Tyne. Coming along into colour coats now, and then we'll soon be into Whitley Bay with its white Spanish city dome, once a feature of the fun fair that was there, and it's also mentioned in the Dire Straits song, Pernal of Love. Then Whitley Bay Lighthouse, where the majority of aircraft start to make that turn for the approach into Newcastle City Airport. So we'll make a turn left now, head back over Seton Sluice in the beach where we started, pass over Seton Delaval Hall on your left, and then we'll pass over where I live, out on your right, so a big wave on the right hand side, and then we'll be down into Newcastle City Airport. So, big, big welcome back into Newcastle City Airport. A big, big thanks to Concord. We couldn't have flown around, what, about 300 miles in about 12 and a half minutes without going supersonic. If you can get off the plane as quick as we can, get on the shuttle bus, and we'll be down at Newcastle Quayside, and we'll just catch the evening sunset. It's been a real, real pleasure, and a great, great privilege to be able to share some of the stunning views of Northumberland. The choice of what to include, villages, towns, scenery, it's been so very, very difficult really. However, who spotted the real picture then? Hmm? Well, you've all enjoyed views of our Northumberland. Thank you all very, very much and a real, very good evening to you. And of course, if John didn't do his Sunday night night caps, I would never have been afforded this opportunity to take part in this evening's presentation and show you Northumberland. Thanks, John. Appreciate it.